Are you studying for your ATPL exams? Do you need a little bit of help with Principles of Flight? If so, you've come to the right place to help with this big old subject. Hi, I'm Grant. I'm a first officer based here in the UK, flying for a major UK airline. I've been flying jets since 2016, and I'm here to help you through principles of flight in an easy to understand manner, giving you some real world examples from my own experiences along the way. In this first class, we're gonna be looking at air and the atmosphere all around us. We first have to understand the various components that make up the air before we can understand what happens when a wing passes through it. The air around us can be described in simple terms of density, pressure, temperature, humidity, and viscosity. The first we're gonna look at is density. So when we're measuring the mass of a solid object, it's fairly straightforward because all the molecules here are packed in close together. To, so to gather them all up and find out the mass is very straightforward. They're already all gathered up for us. However, in the air around us, the molecules are all spread out as so. So to gather them all up and find out the mass of every individual molecule would be very difficult to do. So in this case, we use the measure of density. Density is the mass of all the molecules per unit volume. It is given the symbol rho, which is a Greek letter, and it is described as a mass divided by some volume. Kilograms per meter cubed is a very common uh, measure of this. The molecules in the air are also affected by gravity, which means there are more molecules lower down towards the surface of the Earth. The reverse is also true, there's fewer higher up in the atmosphere. So we can say, as altitude increases, our density decreases. Density is also varied according to the other elements that we're going to cover. The biggest to affect these is caused by the pressure. So all the molecules in the air are moving around constantly in a random motion, as so. And when they collide with any object, they impart a force to that object and it is felt equally in all directions. Static pressure is felt equally in all directions. The measurement for this pressure is the force that is imparted by these molecules per area. So we've got newtons per meter squared and one newton per meter squared is the same as one pascal. Pascal was a scientist who discovered a lot of things about static pressure. I say static pressure because the total pressure in the air is consisting of static pressure and also something called dynamic pressure, which we'll cover in the next class and is essential to generating the forces of lift and uh, drag. Are affected in the same way as with density, there are more lower down. So because there are more lower down, there's more moving in random directions, they're making more collisions, they're hitting things more often, meaning that the pressure, static pressure, lower down, is higher. The inverse is also true. Higher up, there are fewer molecules moving around, colliding less, and the pressure is lower. So we can say as altitude increases, our static pressure decreases the same way as density decreases. Another thing that reduces with altitude is temperature. When we're talking about temperature in principles of flight, we generally deal with something called the Kelvin scale. Kelvin scale is very easy because uh, one degree of Celsius equals one degree Kelvin, so the increments are the same. The only difference is this zero point. For Celsius, the zero is at the freezing point of water. For Kelvin, the zero is at something called absolute zero, which is where it's so cold that molecules stop moving around. This temperature here is equivalent to minus 273 degrees Celsius. So the zero 
on Celsius would actually be 273 Kelvin, degrees Kelvin. So to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you simply add 273. For example, 30 degrees C in Kelvin, just add that 273 and you come up with 303 degrees Kelvin. Very simple to convert between the two. And not only though, Fahrenheit is also still sometimes used by people. If you ever have to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius, the conversion is, so the degrees in Fahrenheit equals the degrees in Celsius times 1.8, and then you add on 32. So that's the scales we use. Now what actually is temperature? So temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy of these individual molecules. What the kinetic energy? Well, they vibrate as they're moving around the air as well as moving in those random directions. The hotter the temperature, it means the more these are vibrating. And when they vibrate, they're moving back and forth really, really fast, stopping any other molecules from coming directly close to them. AKA hot air expands. This is the principle behind a hot air balloon. Because hot air expands, we can also say that it is less dense if it is hotter, because there are gonna be molecules more spread out and therefore the density will reduce. Temperature drops steadily as we increase the altitude until reaching a point called the tropopause, which is the entry point into the stratosphere from the troposphere. Basically, it means that the conditions, the regular sort of conditions that we're laying out here, switch over at this point, and the temperature remains constant in the stratosphere. Now, you may have noticed a bit of a contradiction here. We said earlier, that density reduces with altitude. So density goes down as the altitude goes up. We also said that the pressure decreases as the altitude goes up. But if the temperature is going down as well, as the altitude increases, then that would make the density higher because temperature going up makes the density go down. That's hot air expanding. So the inverse is true as well. Temperature decreasing would make the density go up. So as we reduce temperature, surely the density should go up. So why is the density decreasing with altitude not increasing? The answer is simple. Basically, the pressure has more of an influence over the density than the temperature. There is a hierarchy in essence. So our density varies first according to the pressure, then the temperature, and then the humidity. Humidity, as I'm sure you're aware, is to do with the moisture levels in the air. The more humid, the more moisture there is in the air. Now an individual water molecule actually weighs less than the individual molecules of oxygen or of nitrogen or any of the other trace gases that there are in normal air. That means that when the air is full of these little water molecules, which weigh less, it displaces the heavier oxygen and nitrogen molecules out of the space, which brings the overall mass of the air down. So if we plug that into our density equation, rho equals the kilogram mass per unit volume. That means if we have more water molecules, which are lighter, that means the overall mass would reduce, which means the overall density would reduce. So density reduces as our humidity increases. 
Humidity varies vastly depending on if you're next to the sea, if depending on where you are, if it's recently rained. So there's no neat altitude comparison with humidity. Humidity is very changeable. The last factor to look at with air is the viscosity of air. Viscosity is basically a measure of the stickiness of something. So water is not very viscous, but honey would be very viscous. So it measures how good or bad a fluid is at pulling along other molecules with it as it goes. So if you imagine pouring honey, all that honey starts to get pulled up over the lid of the jar because all of the individual molecules are being pulled by the ones before it. So if I apply a force to this first molecule, something very viscous would pull these other ones along with it, whereas something very unviscous would you know, leave these behind. Air is considered a fluid because it flows, and it is also considered viscous as the molecules are dragged around objects in a predictable fashion, which we'll come on to in the next class. The elements that we've just looked at vary vastly all over the globe and from day to day. So aviators use an international standard atmosphere, which includes all these elements to simplify calculations and it is as follows. So we consider the temperature at sea level to be 15 degrees Celsius. Pressure also at sea level, we consider to be 1013.25 hecto pascals. Hecto just being the prefix and pascals are uh, newtons per meter squared. Density also at sea level is considered to be 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. Temperature lapse rate, this is basically how much the temperature reduces as we increase in altitude. So that's considered to be 1.98 degrees Celsius every 1,000 feet. So every 1,000 feet we go up, the temperature drops by 1.98 degrees Celsius. This is, of course, until reaching that tropopause that we talked about earlier, which is the point between the troposphere and the stratosphere. And that point, the tropopause, occurs at 36,000 and 89 feet. So above 36,089, the temperature stops reducing. It remains constant. And the temperature above is considered to be minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. So this is your international standard atmosphere. 50 degrees Celsius, 1013.25 hectopascals, 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed, 1.98 per 1,000 feet lapse rate, trough pause is at 36,089 feet, and the temperature above is 56.5, minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. So in summary, we have density is given the symbol rho, it is kilograms per meter cubed, and as the altitude increases, the density goes down. Next is we have pressure, PS, and it is newtons per meter squared, or pascals. It also reduces as altitude increases. Temperature Temperature is symbol T. It is given as either a degree Celsius, degrees Kelvin, or sometimes degrees Fahrenheit. 
convert between them. Kelvin is simply the degrees in Celsius plus 273. And Fahrenheit is the degrees in Celsius multiplied by 1.8. Then you add 32. Humidity we talked about and we can't say for sure what happens as we increase with altitude because humidity varies all over the world. But we can say that as humidity goes up, the density will go down because it displaces those heavier molecules with the lighter water. Last thing is air is viscous. Viscosity, the measure of how sticky something is. The relations between all of these elements are as follows. Density varies directly with pressure, but it varies indirectly with both temperature and humidity. Not all influencers are created equally though, because there's a hierarchy and it is actually in the order that I've laid it out there. So our hierarchy for influencing density is pressure first, then temperature, then humidity. And the final thing to learn is the international standard atmosphere which we just went over. You should rewind and look at that if you are unsure still.